What a mighty God we serve. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He holds our lives in the palm of his hands. And in him, there is no shadow of turning. You're welcome to this episode of the SWBN News Watch. I am Chimula Chike, your sister and fellow worker in our Lord's Vineyard. If you missed our previous edition, the playlist is only one click away. Here on SWBN News Watch, we look at everyday news from an end time perspective. Thanks for choosing to join us. SWBN TV is reaching you from Calabar, Cross River State, Nigeria. As is our custom, our first highlight will be on our beloved country. Do stay with us until the very end. Earlier last month, the Nigerian local media carried an intriguing story. This story told the world of arrest made by the Zafara State Command of the Nigerian police. This arrest were of high-profile persons and it was in connection with banditry in the state. Channels Television, a Nigerian flagship media for news, reported the story at the time. Details had it that the police arrested three persons namely a serving member of the Zamfara State House of Assembly, a former local government chairman and a village head in connection to banditry activities in the state. Mohammed Dalijan, the commissioner of police in Zamfara State, made this known to the public. However, he failed to mention the names of the high-profile persons involved. Beloved viewer, this is happening at a time when anti-Christian sentiments are growing stronger in the north. Confirmed news reports have it that most victims of banditry are Christians. In 2023, the International Society for Civil Liberties and Rule of Law, a non-governmental organization, reported that over 8,200 Christians were killed in Nigeria. The report gives harrowing details of killings, kidnappings, and forced disappearances of largely Christian populations in several parts of Nigeria. The killings, according to the report, were carried out by a broad range of actors, including jihadist Fulani headmen, who were responsible for at least 5,100 Christian deaths. Boko Haram and their allies, on the other hand, were responsible for 500 deaths between January 2023 and January 2024. This report further reveals that jihadist Fulani bandits killed 1,600 Christians in Nigeria, while Islamic-inspired security forces murdered 1,000 Christians. In recent news coverage in Nigeria, there has been a rise in suicide bomb attacks and executions of Christians in the north. If you recall, verified news sources confirmed the execution of three Christians in Borno State, another heavily disturbed region in the north. Dear viewer, it is not uncommon to hear speculations that Islamic insurgents and sympathizers of Islamic extremism have infiltrated the Nigerian government. This alarming high-profile arrest in Zamfara State leaves us wondering what other possibilities are out there. Beloved, this is a call to direct our prayers against the sponsors of terrorism in the Nigerian government. Scripture says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Nigeria and Nigerians have a vital role to play in ushering the kingdom reign of Christ upon the earth. Hence, the ceaseless persecution of Christians in Nigeria. Dear believer, pray for the prosperity of the gospel in Nigeria and through Nigeria. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please do not draw the curtain on us yet. We'll be back after this short break. Dear child of God, the environment of the world is hostile to the reality of Christ. Will you give him up to please them? Will you align with the world against him? Will you prefer the way of the world against his voice, his way, his will, his mindset, his desire, his ownership, his prerogative? 
will you negotiate Christ with his own creation? Will you give him up in exchange for the approval of his own creation? Will you in your thoughts, in your words, in your actions, in your worldviews, choose the world over him? There are people who will not be silent in pursuit of him and his will. Become one of them. Be inspired. Be encouraged. This is SWBN TV. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. God bless you. Welcome back and thanks for choosing SWBN TV. Let's take a look at what transpired in neighboring Cameroon. Cameroon is a Central African country east of Nigeria. Cameroon made it to international headlines when Brenda Bia, daughter of its long-sitting president, Paul Bia, declared she was lesbian. Bia is the second longest ruling president in Africa. He has been in power since November 6. 1982. His daughter Brenda Bia sparked outrage when she shared pictures of herself kissing a woman whom she described as her girlfriend. The Voice of America News reported this story. She made this declaration on Instagram where she expressed her wish to live in harmony as a couple. According to a new source, Bia said, LGBTQ people in Cameroon should be spared violence and brutality. Homosexual activists see her declaration as an opportunity to push for recognition in a country where same-sex relations are outlawed. Cameroonians say they want Brenda prosecuted. It will interest you to know that uh, the 27-year-old woman splits her time between the United States and Switzerland, as reported by the Punch newspaper on Nigerian Daily. Meanwhile, in an interview with La Parisienne, a French newspaper, Bia revealed that she had not come out to her family before her public announcement. However, the Punch newspaper reported that the Cameroonian president was yet to comment on his daughter's revelation. She hopes that her openness could spark legislative changes. Cherished viewer, the journey to finding oneself and staying true to that identity has become one of humanity's greatest challenges in these last days. On the front burner of today's identity crisis is a satanic onslaught of perverse and ungodly sexual orientations and expeditions. One would wonder why that old serpent is so interested in how we use our bodies. To the believer who lives by God's word, the answer is very clear. God created the human body to inhabit it. In the beginning, man became a living soul when he received the breath of life from the Almighty God. It is the life of God that sustains all of humanity. This is one reason the enemy has fought so hard to corrupt this body. He has one goal, and that is to debase the image of God in man, seeking to make nonsense of it. Dear viewer, we must find our identity in Christ. Jesus Christ is the express image of God. He is the pattern son, the one we are to follow and to conform to. When Jesus was here with us in human form, his major concern was to do the will of God the Father who sent him. Beloved, you must present your body to God as a living sacrifice. God seeks to make you his dwelling place. No matter the cultural trend, there is a higher call for your body. He created us from dust so that Christ will be our substance, our form, our value, and our worth. Your mission here on earth is to attain this glorious privilege, this glorious estate. If you desire to fulfill this destiny, you must consider him as Lord and Savior, withholding nothing. If this message encouraged you, please share it with someone else. This gospel must be preached. I hope you believe that as well. We'll be back in a bit. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Amara Tumila Shaw, and my favorite Bible verse in Psalm 8 verse 4. And it says, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? 
This Bible verse is one of my favorites. It's not to be on a, in a personal way because it says that God is mindful of us and man by default is rebellious. And still, God loves us. God's love is so pure. I can't even explain it. You have to experience it to know. And then, God loves us so purely that we abuse it. We abuse it over and over just because God says it should be created as male and female. People decide to have uh, feelings for the same gender. I think just because God says something by default, we try to bring, we try to twist it. So this Bible verse, it gives me hope, it encourages me, strengthens me, it makes me run back to the Father. Even when I want to hide naturally, it makes me, gives me strength to believe in his love and know that he loves me and I shouldn't rely on my mate. Welcome back. You're still watching as WBN TV, and this is the As WBN News Watch. I am Chimla Chike, your fellow liberal in God's vineyard. For our final brief on this episode, let's take a look at what is happening to Christians in Asia. According to CBN's Christian World News, violence against believers has fled up in India. This new source says millions in India believe India belongs to Hindus, and so think all other religions must be eliminated from society. Human rights groups accuse Narendra Modi, India's prime minister, of supporting this very extremist view. We're also learning that several states in India have enacted laws to punish non-Hindus. One of India's radical Hindu paramilitary group, known as the RSS, have a practice of targeting Christians and Christian-owned property. The CBN Christian World News says that RSS singles out Christians. They believe that Hindus are abandoning their faith to follow Jesus Christ. The report says one of the group's early founders referred to Christians as anti-national and hostile and should be treated as such. At the RSS, members often combine religious Hindu education with self-defense classes and exercise. This Hindu extremist group attack pastors and demolish church buildings. They do this hoping that India will remain a Hindu country. According to a 2011 census conducted in India, Christianity is India's third largest religion with about 26 million adherents. This accounts for 2.3% of the population as at 2011. CBN World News says the numbers are steadily growing and Hindu nationalists are determined to stop this growth. Dear believer, be strengthened, be courageous, us. As the haters of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ persist, we will also persevere. No hate can withstand the love of Jesus Christ. It is just inconceivable. Let us pray that many Hindus will encounter this love and be transformed. Let us also pray the Lord will strengthen our Christian brothers and sisters in India. As the persecution increases, let more Hindus encounter the love of Jesus Christ through the interactions with our brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks, I'm afraid we've come to the end of this episode of the SWBN News Watch. We are by our Father's mercy. Looking forward to seeing you next time, same channel. I am Chimla Chike, and it was good to have had your company. Say hello, life. This is SWBN TV.